If I can take it, I can make it. The most powerful tool that you have right now in your life, in your body, is your mind. That's why the enemy fights you in your mind. The devil doesn't have to tie you up for you to be bound. He just has to tie up your head. With stress, with worry, with aggravation, with low self-esteem, with pettiness, with anger, with hostility, with rebellion. And he can make you physically sick because your mind is sick. Lay your hands on your head and say, give me a new mind. Give me a new mind means give me a new perspective. Give me a new perspective. Give me a new way of looking at my situation. Give me a new way of looking at my circumstances. Get my mind ready for this year because when I get this year, there's going to be blessings. There's going to be miracles. There's going to be opportunities. Oh yes, it's going to be some struggles. It's going to be some challenges. It's going to be some tests. But even the struggles are an opportunity for me to show off the victory if my mind can handle the change. If you can take it, you can make it. If you can take it, you can make it. All right, you train, you fight way harder than those other guys, and you win. You get out from under. If you can take it, you can make it. You can do this. Just got to believe you can. There's some things I'm not taking with me in the new year. Everything that's inflexible and everything that's not ready and everything that's backwards and everything that's negative and everything that's condescending and everything that's carnal and everything that's holding me back, I refuse to take it over into another year and waste another new year with an old mind. yourself around the comings and goings of this world. Don't shape your opinions and your attitudes around circumstances that you cannot change. If you go into another year and waste another year with the old mentality while somebody's in the hospital begging God for the opportunity that you have right now, you better step into this moment. As soon as you decide to stop looking for answers in other people and miracles somewhere down the yellow brick road and click the heel of your mind, you could have been free years ago. If you can get your mind out, you can get your money out. You can get your family out. You can get your job out. You can get your career out. You can get your health out. You can get your prosperity out. If you can get your mind out, no devil in hell, no weapon formed against you, no enemy that hates you, no witch that hates at you can stop you from being free. If you can get your mind out, grab yourself by the hand and say, we're coming out of there. Tell them I'm coming out head first. Fear is not real. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination, causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist. We are all telling ourselves a story. Now do not misunderstand me. Danger is very real but fear is a choice. There are probably things that you're afraid of doing right now in your life, in your relationships, at work. And the fact that you're afraid, that's robbing you of all of the experiences that you wanna have in your life. I mean, fear is something that stops us all. It's this fear of discomfort 
people have this extreme feeling in their mind they want to avoid discomfort most people their associations are to avoid anything that's uncomfortable but it's so illogical because when you look at comfort and you look at success and progress and the eventual the feelings of accomplishment and of getting past certain hurdles and in, in terms of like how you feel about life a lot of those are connected to discomfort like discomfort is your friend the only way to deal with fear that i found in my life is a couple ways one of those ways is to turn it on itself and ask yourself what am i afraid of i'm afraid of that i gotta be more afraid of what I'm gonna miss out on. So you gotta say, okay, what's the price if I just stay doing this? What's the price? What I need to really even get scared if I learn all this and I don't fall through. And then that fear will get you over your fear. It'll push you through. Turn fear on itself. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit myself in my rocking chair. I'm I'm 85 years old. I'm looking back on my life and I say, I didn't do this or I did. Fear of failure is good. Fear of failure will keep you up at night planning in rehearsing. Fear of failure will keep you training hard. It'll stop you from cutting corners. Fear of failure will keep you working and thinking and striving and relentlessly trying to be more prepared for battle. I want you to be afraid of failing. I want you to be terrified of sitting on your ass and doing nothing. That is what I want you to be afraid of, of waking up in six days or six weeks or six years or 60 years and being no closer to your goal. You've made no progress. That is what you need to be truly afraid of. One of the real reasons we don't do the things that frighten us is because we are afraid of being judged. We are afraid of failure. We are afraid of success. We are afraid of stumbling. One of the reasons we don't really step into our heroic nature as human beings is because we're attached to the outcome. And so just developing the philosophy where you live in the moment, you do the things that frighten you, and you don't really worry about what happens. That will develop a sense of fearlessness and a sense of bravery. The breakthrough happens by conditioning your mind every day, by feeding it a role model or story. It's putting yourself in a peak state and you follow through by getting physically strong. It's creating a little ritual of doing a little bit each day and then you get momentum. Get up and go. Take the risk, take the gamble, take the first step, take action. And don't let another day slip by. I found that with depression, one of the most important things you could realize is that you're not alone. You're not the first to go through it. You're not gonna be the last to go through it. Hold on to that fundamental quality of faith. Life gives us these events because there's an area of our life that has to grow. If someone really wants to feel alive, they want joy, they want happiness, they want to feel a sense that life is meaningful and alive, what does it take? I tell you one word, progress. One of the things that's causing this funk that people are in is that we're living our lives in these very unfulfilling ways where you're going to this office with artificial light and you're doing something you don't want to do all day long and then you get home and you're tired. And on top of that, you're eating shit. You're eating potato chips and you're drinking soda. Just go hike up to the top of a mountain and look out. You know, there's a reward that you get from that that is intensely like soul filling and you have a choice. You can be a victim and you can let it break you or you can actually ask yourself, how can I leverage the pain? How can I leverage the darkness so it grows me, so it makes me stronger, so it makes me wiser, so it allows me to tap into the greatest of virtues of humanity. It was so hard because people put me down and I started believing that I was not good enough. I started believing that I was a failure. And the fear that we have is that we're gonna be alone. There are some things in life that are out of your control that you can't change and you gotta live with. The choice that we have though is either to give up or keep on going. 
You, you might not even want to get out of bed in the morning. It might be that bad. Please remember this, crisis comes to serve the person who wants to use it as fuel. When things go wrong, they always seem to happen at once and they just compound. And it's, it's pretty easy sometimes to to feel beaten but that doesn't mean give up in fact it means the opposite it means it's time for you to fight harder to dig in it means it's time for you to go on the war path who you are today is no longer resourceful for who you're going to be who you are to be next for you to fulfill your greatest purpose here on this planet, in this lifetime, you have to have multiple deaths to immature versions of yourself so that you can be reborn as a stronger version of yourself. That's how the process goes. Who you are today might need to die for you to do what you need to do for the next phase. We are not designed to do things that are uncomfortable or scary or difficult. Our brains are designed to protect us from those things. And in order to change, in order to build a business, in order to be the best parent, the best spouse, to do all those things that you know you wanna do with your life, with your work, with your dreams, you're gonna have to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary. But if I fail, I try again, and again, and again. For as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. And it's not the end until you've given up. And just the fact that you're here should persuade you that you have another chance to get back up. When we close our mind to what is possible for us, closes off the genius that resides and lives in each and every one of us. You would be amazed at what the average brain is capable of. The mind is the battleground. The fight is in your mind. So every day you have to sell yourself and get out of your mind those old thoughts, that old belief system. Every day you've got to sell yourself on that it's possible. That you got to put a new mind in you. You got to get out of your mind. You got to begin to restructure your thinking. Every day you've got to begin to recondition your mind. You keep looking for it outside of you. Stop. Sit with yourself. What is it that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort? That's your gift. But if you are constantly looking outside of yourself and you don't latch on to your gift, you will never find your purpose. If you want to succeed, you must commit to your own gift and embrace it. And ask yourself, what am I afraid of? I'm afraid of that. I gotta be more afraid of what I'm gonna miss out on, missing out on my mission, missing out on who I'm supposed to be. If you're not getting rid of fear, then use fear. Use fear or it uses you, it's that simple. And that means you gotta stop thinking about it and stop dreaming about it and stop researching every aspect of it and reading all about it and debating the pros and cons of it. Just start doing it. Take that first step and make it happen. Don't let them tell you it can't be done because often they will tell you it can't be done and uh, it's just because they don't have the courage to try it. Impossible is not a fact, it's an opinion. Join the crowd's doing. Find your way doing the opposite.
Because the truth is, if you want to be an anomaly, you've got to act like one. You want to write a book or make a movie or build a house or a computer or put together some mobile application? Where do you start? You start right here. Because you're gonna sit there at 72 and you're gonna say, I wish, I wish, I wish. I don't wanna live with the idea. Wonder what would have happened had I done more with my life. I'm gonna go for it, come hell or have water. My destiny. It's necessary you take responsibility for it. That you make it happen, that you don't give up, that you don't take any objection or disappointment or defeats personally, that you keep on keeping on, that you don't decide that I can't make it because you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Every single champion is the same as every ordinary person. The only differential is that they show up to the event. They see failure as a learning curve. They welcome failure. You learn more from failure than you ever will from success. Impossible is just a word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in the world they've been given than to explore the power they have to change it. I dare you under every single circumstance, keep dreaming, keep looking at your dream, keep focusing on your dream, keep going after the dream because that's what you success is. The first step, the first day, the first minute, okay? You're excited. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna kick ass, right? And the next day comes and you're like, man, this is a little tougher. And then you take another step and another step. And maybe you get to Thursday or Friday and you're like, fuck, this is pretty fucking hard, man. All right? And then what happens is the enthusiasm from the beginning of the process starts to fade out. You forgot why you started. All you could think about is what's in front of you right now. All you could think about is that next grueling step, that next terrible workout that you just can't fucking stand anymore. When you lose sight of the purpose, you get too much value of what the pain is today. If you find a fear, the quickest, the easiest way you can beat it is initially, right when it comes in. If you allow it to sit, it will grow root and start breaking you down, destroying the potential of the person you can be. It's an uphill battle. It's a path less taken, not the beaten path that everyone else takes. It's a path that leads to character. And along that road, you're not going to see too many friends. You're gonna see your shadow most often. See, the thing is, for many people, they've tried the same path you're on, and they failed. You gotta trust in the heart of hearts, inside what you're doing, what you believe in, is a worthy cause, a winnable fight. The champions, guys, it's not their potential, it's not their genetics. It's their perseverance to always show up. It's not the title that makes you, it's not the success that makes you. The character defines the success, defines the fame. It's how you look at something, if your name's attached to it, that you do it right, the best of your ability, every single time. Championships aren't won in the theater or the arena. They're won in the thousands of hours in the training room, in the labs, in the 5 a.m. runs, and then it's raining, when everyone else is sleeping. That's when it's won. The heart of a champion is a light switch that's always on. It doesn't go on and off when someone's watching. It's constant. Fear is self-imposed, meaning it doesn't exist. You create it, you can destroy it too. I love fear, and the reason why, behind every fear is the person you want to be. You face your fears, you become the person you want to be. You run from your fears, you're not living. You're alive, but you're not digging the freedom. If you face your fears, guys, fear, 
It's destroyed. It comes back in its confidence. Like, what else am I? What else am I capable of? What else am I holding my back from that I'm capable of more? What am I running from? I don't need to. What else can I overcome? You go after and you give it all you have. If you lose, at least you try, man. I failed. It's ten times more of a man than someone said, "What if?" Because what if never went to the arena? That you do it right, the best of your ability, every single time. That's the same person who has his hand raised on the podium one day. And the difference between a champion and someone who's forgotten is that a champion shows up. That's the only thing. Every day shows up. I'm going to fucking derail for a second. Go, this go is right something ahead. that is so interesting to me, and then you will bring us back. The way that people think I have tomorrow, the way that today is so finite and so like just like another day and tomorrow will have more potential. People don't create the momentum in their life. And I'm doing a really bad job of explaining this. Bear with me because I really want people to understand this concept. You're getting fucked by the fact that today seems so inconsequential. Today is just one of many and that it's a Friday and you know what, like I'm going to hit it hard on Monday. And, and that sense of like, it's, it's so just one of many that people don't buckle down and say, I have to do this right now today. This is why like when people use the word patience, I go fucking crazy. I want to crawl out of my skin. You will lull yourself into this sense of like, I got something done today. That's great. But you know what? I need to be patient. I need to understand this is going to take a lot of time. Dude, it's going to take a lot of time if you go balls to the wall every day, going all out like a freak. Well, I think the one thing that discipline definitely does help you with is it helps you get things done. And when you get things done, when you actually do things, you have more success. If you have more success, and sometimes a big part of success is just not being fucking lazy and just doing it. That's like 90% of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like, you're not going to feel perfect every day. If I only worked out when I felt good, I'd be a fat fuck. The reason discipline is hard to maintain is because it is hard to maintain. That's what makes discipline hard. It's hard. And it is work to maintain the discipline. That's what it is. Work. Giving no slack. None. That's the discipline. H holding the line. Maintaining the standard. Those minutes and those hours, they turn into weeks and months and years. And holding the line in those critical minutes will put you in an infinitely better place physically and mentally if you maintain the discipline. Work through the weakness. Fight through the temptation. Hold the line. Hold the line. Maintain the discipline. It is not easy, but it is worth it. Because, yes, because discipline equals freedom. I don't really want to work out. I work out. I really don't want to hammer on a project. I hammer on the project. Simply going through the motions. And you stayed on the righteous path, the disciplined path. You stayed on the war path. Which is right where you know that you belong. If you have a clear belief in that it will happen no matter what, 
then nothing can stop it. You know, it is destined to happen. If you can see it here, and you have the courage enough to speak it, it will happen. It feels familiar. I saw it so clearly. I swear to God, I saw it so clearly, so consistently, until it's here in reality. I see it in my head, and then it happens. It's crazy how things just form, dreams just form into reality. My dream is to be world champion in the UFC, have more money than I know what to do with, and have a great life for my kids, my grandkids, everyone in my, in my family. I will, I will be where I want to be. I, I'm 100% confident that I will make it to the top. I have the skills, I have the dedication, and it's something I really, really want. Words can't even describe, but it will happen, and I'll let you know when it happens. When I was a kid, I used to visualize stadiums. Visualizing an arena full of fans, I realized like, that this is attainable. The dream, it's there for the taking if I put the time in. And then, and then when, when I start getting that focus and realize, no, fuck, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this happen. Now that has happened, I'm, I'm, I'm making it happen. And that alone spurs me on even more. In, in the struggle, when things are going good and you visualize these good things happening, you visualize more good things happening, that's easy. What's not easy to do is when things are going bad and you're visualizing the good stuff. I visualized, I'm sitting here on the steering wheel visualizing a brand new car, I'm visualizing good things in times of struggle. When you can do that, I think that really makes that law of attraction work. You know what, I'm actually good at this. It's actually something that I really enjoy doing and now there's nothing else that matters to me. I don't know about nothing else. It's an addiction. Something that I love can actually secure my family's future and make us live a good life for the rest of our days. You know what I mean? And it's not work. I don't work. I live. And that is why I have this tunnel vision. And that is why I'm willing to kill every single man in my path to get that belt. You know what I mean? To, to secure the future from my family's future. I'm very confident in my abilities and what I'm predicting I'm going to do. I back it up with work ethic, I back it up with hours upon hours of time and dedication. I never slip, I never take a second off this game. True wins, true losses, true life. True hours in the gym and preparation, I feel that I am untouchable right now. You know, I'd rather shoot and miss than not shoot at all. Make no mistake, I'm setting up to be the greatest of all time. I will go down as the greatest of all time. I don't just talk the talk, I walk the walk. Every time I say I'm gonna do something, I go and do it. Watch me take over boxing, trust me on that. I'm gonna stop going, you're all gonna hear wounds, gonna shut the whole goddamn world. If you say it to yourself and you look yourself in the eye, look yourself in the mirror and truly, truly believe that not a man alive can beat you, then that, that is the way it is. I'll be immortalized after this. I'm just going to conquer once again the supposed unconquerable. I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created. I was just a scared kid. I got called nigger every day of my life growing up, um, lived in a small town. One of the high ups in the KKK son sat behind me in two classes, so he called me nigger all the time. I got my first car, they spray painted nigger, we're gonna kill you on it. So I was just an insecure, scared kid. And I wasn't going anywhere, and I was exactly what everybody said I was gonna be, which was nothing. But the best thing that happened to me, no one helped me. No one felt sorry for me. So the things that we run from, we run from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. As painful and as brutal as it is, we have the ability to go in such a space. If you're willing to suffer, and I mean suffer, your brain and your body, once connected together, can do anything. The only way you're ever 
going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer to grow. To grow, you must suffer. I wanted to change to be the hardest man ever created. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, having no self-esteem, my goal was the only person that's going to turn this person around is me. How? That's the question. How are you going to do that? I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. Motivation comes and goes. When you're driven, whatever's in front of you will get destroyed. I signed up for this race, it's called the San Diego One Day, where you run around a one mile track for 24 hours to see how many miles you can get. My goal was 100 miles. Um, I got to mile 70, but I was done. My feet were broken, I was stretch fractures, shin splints, muscles were tearing, I was in bad shape. I was out of it. I was in the worst pain in my entire life. I was, to me, on the brink of death. In times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are. Because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test, it's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life. I said to myself, who on this fucking earth would still be going right now? You are. I got to mile 81, and the second she said that I'm not gonna make the time, I ran the last 19 miles, nonstop. By me running, I am callous in my mind. I'm not training for a race. I'm training for life. I'm training for the time when I get that two o'clock in the morning call that my mom is dead or something happens tragic in life. I don't fall apart. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one, so I can handle what life is gonna throw at me. Because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just gonna crumble. We, we are all great. No matter if, if you think you're dumb, no matter if you think you're fat, no matter if you are fat, no matter if you've been bullied, or no matter if you just got back from Iraq or Afghanistan and you have no legs or your arms or whatever, man, we all have greatness. You don't belong at the bottom, and it's time for you to get your butt from down there. It's time for you to stop being comfortable at the bottom. Get your butt up and get to where you're supposed to be. Get your butt up. Get where you belong. Do what you're supposed to do. Live like you're supposed to live. Right now, for you to find greatness in yourself. You're not gonna find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark, but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. And that means you gotta be quiet. Shut the fuck up, go in a room, stop talking. Search your soul, search your mind, search your abilities, and you'll find it. But if you're not looking for it, you won't find it. So you gotta go start your journey. I think that among the things that prevent us from acting is the fear of failure. And if you've already failed, you don't want to fail again. The pain of that, the disappointment. Many of us don't act because we want other people's approval. We want everybody to like us and to accept us. We're settling for less than what we actually deserve. We don't feel good about it, but we make it work in our minds. We'll come up with some kind of excuse to make it all right.
Most people like to feel like they're a king in the area of their comfort zone. They only want to do those things that they know how to do well. So there are many reasons why we don't act. There are other things though that affect us. It's that not wanting to take personal responsibility. We want somebody else to do it and that's not possible. And when you go through life like that, something in you dies. You need to start asking yourself some questions. What do I really, really, truly want? Don't wait around for things to be just right. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Don't wait for the ideal situation. It will never be ideal. Today, this opportunity you have, it might not be here next year. It might not be here the year after next. It might not be here the year after that. This is the only moment you got. And what you will find, that when you decide to act, when you decide to take life on, and let me warn you, it can be painful, it will be uncomfortable, and that's where the growth is. Never be satisfied with yourself. Always know that as you invest the effort and time on you, that's the greatest ability that human beings have above animals. See, a dog can't be anything but a dog. Tree can't be anything but a tree. Human being, you've got unlimited potential. You can put effort on you, and by concentrating on you and developing you, you can transform your life wherever you are right now. Many people will leave the universe without a trace. No one will know they were here. What will you leave? What will be different because you came this way? Listen to that still small voice within you. Don't try and make everything logical. There's some things about life that defies logic. See, there's some good out there for you in the universe that has your name on it, and nobody can get your good. It has your name on it. They can't take your stuff. It's your stuff. So when you know that, when you know that whatever you're seeking, it's also seeking you, you don't worry. You don't run scared. You don't think somebody's going to take it from you. You've got to say yes. Yes to my dreams. Yes to me. Yes. I can make it. Yes, I can. You don't need anybody to approve your dream. It was given to you. If they can't see it, it's because it wasn't given to them. It was given to you. You're going to get thrown to the ground again and again and again. But when you have determination, and you know that what you're doing is right, it gives you your life, it gives a special meaning and power to you, I refuse to be denied. And I'm going to go all out. I'm going to be relentless. I don't care how many no's I encounter. Doesn't matter how many failures I've made. Doesn't matter how many mistakes I've endured. Doesn't matter about my defeats. Doesn't matter about what I've done. Yes! Yes! Yes, I can! Nothing is impossible. 
the only thing that's impossible is what you make impossible. So I need you to understand that it's not going to be an easy road. But I'm telling you, if you're willing to put in 120%, if you're willing to go all in, you can take that which was once impossible and make it possible. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, but it's necessary that you go for what is yours in the universe. You do what it is you're supposed to. You're supposed to build something. You're supposed to create something. I don't know how to do it. Learn. It's you. It's on you. You got to make that happen. Nobody's going to bring it to you on a silver platter and say, here's your dream manifested. No, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. It's difficult. Yes, right. And it's worth it. I want you to hold on. It may not happen in the time that you think is going to happen, but I want you to know something. If you quit, it's never gonna happen. If you quit, if you give up, if you stop, if you do not persevere, listen to me, you will never see it. The major key to your reaching your dream, your living up to your greatness, your making your contribution, is you. What do you need to know to be, to do, to have what you want that you don't know right now? What do you need? And so I'm asking you this question. You got to get this one. What do you need to know that you don't know right now? What information, what books do you need to read? What mentors do you need? What circles do you need to hang around? See, if you know what your life work is, I encourage you to start working on it. If you can't do it all at one time, do just a little bit of it. in a room, close the door, and you've got to see yourself doing it. You've got to feel yourself doing it. You've got to actually walk in it. You've got to go in the future, live it out, come back in the present, and start working toward it. Promise me this, five to ten minutes that you will devote to seeing yourself being successful. So I need you to do this for me. Like, I don't care what happens in your life. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care where you are. Every single day you wake up, if you're gonna have energy, if you're gonna have passion, if you're gonna have drive, every day you wake up, you've gotta start with that vision. It may not happen in six months, it may not happen in a year, it may not happen in two years, but at some point, my dream is going to become a reality. Every single day, we're not waiting for it to happen. We just don't have sight. Sight is for people who live in the present. We have vision. We're going to make it happen before it happens. You got to write even if no one published your book, write because that was given to you to do. Everything in you is telling you to stop, to give up. Every muscle is aching and you're saying to yourself, you can do it. Where you are is temporary. You will not be there for the rest of your life. Other people couldn't see it. A lot of people didn't believe it. You were attacked, you were criticized. People were opposing you, but you kept on doing it. It was hard, it was rough, it was difficult, but to you, it was worth it. You have to know that this thing is going to work. Say this to yourself every day. I can write my own book. I can have my own business. I, I can take the trip and travel around the world. It's possible. I can bounce back from adversity and reinvent my life. It's possible.
I understand now you are attracted to greatness because greatness is all in you. But it's easier to watch greatness. It's easier to go see greatness than it is to put in the time, to put in the energy, to, to discipline yourself, to sacrifice. It's easier. And so that's why you average. You've been doing the same thing. You at the same job. You experiencing the same things in your life. Nothing has changed. Everything about you is phenomenal, but you've consciously made a decision to be average. You are average in school. You are average at your workplace. Like everything you do is average, and not because it's average, but because you made a decision. You made a choice to be average. Why? Because the people around you are average. Or maybe you grew up in an average environment, or went to an average school, or you work for an average company, and so you've decided. You've decided to go against who you are. No one else feels sorry for you. Only you do. That's the type of mindset when people aren't successful at life. They sit there and they feel sorry for themselves and they want all this fucking sympathy from everybody else. Yet they're not willing to go out there and make shit happen for themselves. Because this is not for everyone. This is not for the faint at heart. This is for people who have goals and dreams that they want to achieve. Everyone seems to think that this world, this government, somebody owes them something. Nobody owes you shit. If you want something, go out there and get it. Go out there and fucking take it. That's all there is to it. You could be great if you just showed up. Get in the game. Quit. Stop playing. You deserve to see what your life would look like if you gave 120%. You gotta run after your best. You gotta run after it. You gotta run after your destiny. 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 You gotta run after it. You gotta run. Because success is never an accident. And if you don't want it, get out of my way. Because there are some people who want to do something with their life who will run. The choice that we have though is either to give up or keep on going. I want to ask you, what are you going to believe? Are you going to believe in yourself? Are you going to believe everybody else's judgment on you? Like I want your dream to be so clear, so vivid, right? That when you wake up in the morning, all you got to do is step in your dream. I didn't get it until I got to this age, but I'm gonna start running. I messed up junior high, but now I'm gonna start running. I messed up high school, but now I'm gonna start running. The moment you get the word, you ought to run. The Bible said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. When God gives you a chance at an escape, don't be cute, run after your death. My God, run! Run, do y'all hear me? Run after it! Run after it! Run! Don't be ashamed! Run! You might be taller than me, you might be bigger than me, you might be stronger than me, but I'm coming and I'd rather die trying. I'd rather give a year. I'd rather put in work and fail. The harder you work, the harder it is to surrender. And that's in every aspect of life. Like this is your last day on the planet. I deserve to see what my life would look like if I gave 120%. I would rather aim for the stars and not hit them than to not aim at all. I would rather go after it and not get it than not go after it at all. I'd rather try and fail than not try at all. I don't want to live with the idea, wonder what would have happened had I done more with my life. I'm going to go for it, come hell or have water, I'm going after my destiny. You got to run after your destiny. You can't stroll after your destiny. You can't walk after your destiny. You got to run, run, run after your destiny. Run after it, run after it. Run! 
If you just run after what's in front of you, you will escape what's behind you. Don't spend all your time trying to fix what's behind you because you'll never be able to fix what's behind you. You have to run after what's in front of you. You want to be successful, here's the thing you have to do. You have to jump. There is no way around it. You have to jump. Every successful person has jumped. You got to jump. You got to take a leap of faith. You got to dash off that cliff and you got to jump out there as far as you can. Now, a lot of times you stand on the cliff of life and you see other people soaring by, gliding down like a bird flying through the air. You know, they going over to the south of France. You see them on a boat somewhere. You see their family vacationing here, their family vacationing there. You see them dressing like this. You see them in New York, then you see them in London. They flying by, you know why? It's cause they parachute open. But the only way to get your parachute to open so you can soar, you got to jump. Now here's the problem. Here's the problem, my friends. When you jump, I can assure you one thing. You listening? I promise you this. Your parachute will not open right away. No, that's the fear part. I promise you your parachute will not open right away. You're gonna hit them sides and them rocks. You're gonna tear your back out on them cliff. You're gonna, you're gonna cut yourself. You're gonna get wounded. You're gonna get some tears and stuff like that. But eventually, the parachute will open and you'll be so. But here's the other caveat. Let me teach you this right here. If you do not jump, I promise you one thing, your parachute will never open. So you're safe, but you'll never soar. You got to jump. A lot of times people believe in certain things, but they keep to themselves. They don't put it out there. If you truly believe in it, if you become vocal with it, you are creating that law of attraction and it will <clears throat> become reality. I'm a professional MMA fighter with a record of 4 and 1. Um, I'm an up and coming fighter and without a doubt you will see me on the UFC in the, in the near future. Without a doubt. If you can see it here and you have the courage enough to speak it, it will happen. The number one thing is you have to have a very clear vision, a very clear goal of where you want to go. Because only then you will get there. Uh, you can have the best airplane or the best ship in the world, but if the captain doesn't know where to go, he will just drift around. If the pilot does not know where to go, he will just drift around with his plane. So it's, I think the key thing is that we know where we are going and that you're very passionate about that. And you see it always in front of you, the goal. Nobody knows what you can do but you. Nobody can tell you. If I tell you all the people who told me I wasn't going to act or sing or dance or I wasn't good at it or I should stop or I should quit or even after I became famous, you know, for doing these things, you know, uh, I, would be, I would be locked in a house somewhere doing nothing. Um, the truth is nobody knows what's inside of you. Only you know what's inside of you. Only you know what you can accomplish. If you're doing anything interesting in the world, you're gonna have critics. The only way, if you, if you absolutely can't tolerate critics, then don't do anything new or interesting. Don't listen to the naysayers, because there's always people out there that will tell you that you will not be able to do that, forget it, it's a stupid dream that you have, or a, a crazy vision of those. Don't listen to the naysayers. And you're at home watching, and you're being called weird, or you're being called different, or whatever the hell you're being called, I'm here tonight to tell you, your critics do not count. Their words will fade. You won't. The other thing that's important is, is that you got to shoot for the top. You got to go and really have big goals and think big, because then you're going to get big. Then you're going to go and achieve big things. That is the most important thing. You know, We don't achieve big things by accident. Every challenge I take, I... I have a big vision. I, I put a lot of effort, a lot of sacrifice in things I do. 
if I don't do it, it means I don't believe in it. In this, I believe very strong, and I will not give up until I'm top of the world. So that's the way it works. You aim for the top, you don't aim for the second. Second place is the first place among the last ones, and that's not my target. If you feel you have something to give, if you feel that your particular talent is worth developing, is worth caring for, then there's nothing you can't achieve. If they can do it, I can do it. And that's the mentality. If somebody else can do it, you can do it. And I said to myself, I will do it and I will do it better. That's the mentality. And I believe with the mentality is 50% of the success in what you're doing. People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing, and it's totally true. And the reason is, uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, you don't really love it, uh, you're gonna give up. And that's what happens to most people, actually. If you really look at, 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 at the ones that uh, ended up you know, being successful, unquote, in the eyes of society and the ones that didn't, oftentimes it, it's the ones that are successful loved what they did so they could persevere when, you know, when it got really tough. And, and the ones that, that didn't love it quit because they're sane. Right? Who would want to put up with this stuff if you don't love it? So it's a lot of hard work, and, and it's a lot of worrying constantly. And uh, um, if you don't love it, you're going to fail. And you got to push your body. You got to overcome. It's like you're moving past a barrier, or move, moving a step forward. A lot of people just want to stop because they're dead tired, but you got to do that extra one. Cause that's when it, you improve. Um, if you think that you're going to go and accomplish something really special and be the best in anything in the world, and you think you can do it without working, you make a big mistake. Because no matter what I did, if it was in bodybuilding or in acting or if it was in, in, in the political arena, uh, it always took a lot, a lot of work. Work your butt off. You never want to fail because you didn't work hard enough. I never wanted to lose a competition or lose an election because I didn't work hard enough. I always believed leaving no stone unturned. Muhammad Ali, one of my great heroes, had a great line in the 70s when he was asked, how many sit-ups do you do? He said, I don't count my sit-ups. I only start counting when it starts hurting. When I feel pain, that's when I start counting because that's when it really counts. That's what makes you a champion. That's the way it is with everything. No pain, no gain. Do you mean that the competition is not the reality? Listen, the work is behind the scenes. Competition is the easy part. <laughs> behind the scenes is where the work is done. And everything is done to, to get to that one race that you need to run. You know what you gotta do. Do it. I had this idea, dude, I tell you, I think I can do this, you know? The problem was I didn't have any evidence that I could do it. And so what I did at 25 years old is I did two things that changed my life. <clears throat> Number one, I got my ethics in. Ethics, what was, what, what was ethical to me, not to you, not to somebody else, but I had to get my own moral code. You know, I quit smoking weed, quit hanging around dr druggies, quit doing weekends like everybody else. Everybody around me, I looked around, I'm like, all these guys, man, are losing. They're not doing well, they're not getting better, they're telling the same stories over and over. I gave up my weekends, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, no more. But the problem is the sense of impatience. It's as if an entire generation is standing at the foot of a mountain, they know exactly what they want, they can see the summit, what they can't see is the mountain. This large, immovable object. because there's a, a lot of people out there that are constantly trying to improve themselves by looking for the one change. The one change, right? The one change in their life that's gonna make their dreams come true. And even worse, on top of that, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of self-help gurus, and they're trying to sell 
the one thing. They're trying to sell the nine steps or the enlightened path that's going to allow you to unlock all of your human potential and fulfill the dreams so you can live the life that you've, you've always wanted to live. Now, I'm no guru. And I definitely don't claim to be. I'm just a man. But I will tell you this. It isn't one thing. And it isn't ten things. And it isn't a hundred things. It isn't a quick path. And there are no shortcuts. Meditation won't get you there. And neither will a miracle drug or an organic supplement or some superfood. Getting better isn't a hack or a trick or a one change that you need to make. Getting better is a campaign. It's a campaign. It's a daily, a weekly, it's an hourly fight. An incessant fight that doesn't stop against weakness and against temptation and against laziness. It's a campaign of discipline campaign of hard work and dedication it's waking up early and going to bed late and grinding out every second in between every single day so you want to get better you want to self-improve stop looking for a shortcut and go find your alarm clock find your discipline and find your guts and your passion and your drive and find your will. And then, and then you will find your freedom. And I think anybody who's watching right now, they may not be the most talented entrepreneur or salesman or uh, you know an amazing uh, craft of content but if they outwork somebody, that is a variable that feels in control. Somebody wants to start a YouTube show, if they do it 365 days a year, versus somebody that does it 137 days a year, and they're equally as talented, the person that does it 365 is gonna win. I mean, that's just the truth. And it's the only practical advice that I think that I can give. Go get more talent. I can't say that. But, you know, work harder, and go to less happy hours, and don't watch you know, entire seasons of House of Cards? Yeah, that feels real. People need to know you for one major thing first. He works. He produces. The guy's there every day. The guy's pushing and shoving. Because the truth is, no matter how good your ideas are, how good your art is, or how good your skill set is, if you're not working, man, if you're not vibrating at a frequency that people say, my God, how does that guy do all that? If you're not vibrating at that rate, 10X levels, massive action, tremendous work ethic that's just a muscle now and it's, it's just a discipline in your life and it's a way. Look, if you're not working at that level, you're not gonna make it. The problem is, this entire generation has an institutionalized sense of impatience. And do they have the patience to go on the journey to maintain love, to feel fulfilled? Or do they just quit and onto the next, dump and onto the next? Because everybody wants to come up with excuses. I spend my life reading excuses on social media and my inbox. Um, this, I wasn't born that way, I wasn't born here. This, I'm a, a female, I'm an immigrant, I'm a minority, I'm transgender. I, ex Excuses, reality. By the way, I truly believe those are disadvantages. I'm not naive. The problem is, nobody cares. Stop saying any of those things. Every single person who has ever done anything worthwhile or exceptional or difficult or extraordinary, anyone, whether it's great artists or authors or mathematicians or whatever the f it is, Everyone encounters difficulties. There is no easy road. It does not exist. It is impossible. Everyone has issues. If you have time to pursue a hobby, if you have time to do anything in your life, you can better yourself. And here's one way you never better yourself. When you come up with excuses for why other people are successful and you're not, that shit is 
uniquely dangerous. When you give yourself an escape, trust me, everybody has a hard road. I wanted to jump out a window several times during my young life. I wanted to jump in front of a train and just end it because it's too much pressure. We all go through hard times. We all go through depression. We all do go through doubt and, and, and moments in your life where it's really f difficult and you're trying to figure out what the f your path is going to be. It's hard as sh but that is what makes you a person. And those difficult moments are what build your character. It's not about outdoing anyone. It's about how to outdo yourself. Some people see the thing that they want, and some people see the thing that prevents them from getting the thing that they want. Success is your duty. It is your obligation and your responsibility. Take ownership of your mistakes. Take ownership of your shortfalls. Take ownership of your problems. And then take ownership of the solutions that will get those problems solved. Take ownership of your mission. Take ownership of your job, of your team, of your future, and take ownership of your life. And lead. Lead. Lead yourself and your team and the people in your life, lead them all to victory. Don't just listen. Don't just listen. Do. Put this information to work make today count every day get aggressive and attack whether it's on the battlefield or on the beat or in the factory or on the farm or on the construction site or on the website in the garage or in the firehouse don't hesitate Step, step forward and get after it. Everybody doesn't win. And the sooner you wake up to that, that biology is ruthless, man, then you get a little fear in you. And when you get a little fear in you, you start listening. Because if you're truly afraid, you listen. Let a little fear come in and drive you and motivate you. We're set up for failure because we think we're going north, but we're going south. That's why 50% of people who get married divorce, 80% of businesses fail. 
That's why 30% of Americans are on some form of antidepressant medication. That's why 60, 70% of people are overweight. I mean, in a way we're kind of fucked. But we live in a society that's very narcissistic. You're told like, oh, everybody's a winner. No, not everybody's a winner. That's like saying everybody's blonde. There's a definition of what blonde is. Blonde is like this yellowish hair. So you lose meaning when you start going, everybody's blonde. When you see your life and anytime there should be pain, you go, no, 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 no. It was just how it was meant to be. No, look yourself in the mirror sometimes and go, you know why I'm not happy? It's because I didn't listen 10 years ago and I got in the wrong career. You know I'm not happy? Because I married the wrong damn person. It wasn't meant to happen. Yes, everything happens for a reason. You made a bad choice, but it didn't have to be that way. And the second you build up pain, and this by the way is not my opinion. If you talk to guys like Dr. David Buss, top 10 most cited uh, psychologist in history, okay? He's one of my main mentors. He told me, I said, do adults change? Like we do all this self-help videos and podcasts. I said, am I wasting my time? He goes, yeah, kind of. <laughs> I said, why? He said, well, after 25, it's very hard to teach old dogs new tricks. By the way, that's why I've changed. Most of my stuff targets people 18 to 25. That's why I do Snapchat and all that. Cause there's hope for 18 to 25 year olds. Now, if you're over 25, before you get depressed, he told me, but I have good news for you, Ty. I said, what? He said, adults, learn through massive trauma. So you will learn. You have to let in some trauma into your life. And that's rough, but no pain, no gain. Like if you are 100 pounds overweight and you wanna be able to play basketball, here's my news for you. Everything happened for a reason. You got fat because you ate too much and you didn't exercise. So welcome to the gym. In the first year is gonna be hell, but that pain hopefully will reprogram your brain that every time you want to eat that nasty thing, go, wait, I don't want to go through that pain again. So I think one of the myths of society is we won't let pain in. We just excuse it all the way. Like, no, that was meant to happen. Oh, you wasted 20 years of life married to the wrong person in the wrong career? No, Tom, it was meant to happen. Where's the people who go, you fucked up, dude. <laughs> you wasted 20 years and you will never get it back. You better go in your room and cry. And the truth is you only learn as an adult Unfortunately, most people can only change with mass and trauma. Optimizing your life for hustling and grinding is like optimizing your life around going pee. No, pee is something you have to do. It's not the goal. You don't go, woo! You know what my goal is? Hit the toilet seven times a day. No, but you have to do it to survive. So grinding and working hard and hustling is not what you optimize for. It's pain. Why would you optimize for pain? But as in this, it is a necessity. And if you look at an actual scientific explanation of what makes you successful, it is not just hard work. If that's true, construction workers would be the wealthiest people in the world. Waiters and busboys, they work harder than the owner. The most scientific psychometric personality test is called Hexaco. It's more accurate than big five, which used to be, it's much more accurate than Myers-Briggs, INFJ, ENTP, all that stuff. So Hexaco tests you on 26 facets of your personality. And one of them's called conscientiousness. And it's been proven over and over by scientists, conscientiousness is the most correlated with business success. Define conscientiousness. So, yeah. so then it divides into four sub facets, organization, perfectionism, diligence, and prudence. So the real truth is hard work is 25% of the formula because diligence is known in the common language as hard work, okay? So if you just think diligence alone will get you success, you're like a basketball player that thinks you'll play in the NBA because you can shoot free throws. Ah, there's, you ever seen the best free throw shoes in the world? They're old 70 year old men who shoot underhanded, but they don't play in the NBA because the NBA is not all about free throws. So NBA is scoring, defense, free throws maybe is one component, rebounding, assists, there's a lot of components. So the other three you have to get good at. So the first one is perfectionism. People, you have to know how to double check your work. It's that simple. It doesn't mean you're always a perfectionist, but it means when it's important, when you're a pilot of an airplane, double check before you go. They, if you get on a plane, you hear the pilots double checking, the co-pilot going, you know, 
hydraulics. And the guy goes, hydraulics. And that's why planes don't crash. And it's called Six Sigma. It's three defects per million. Your goal in business and in life on the important things is to make three mistakes per million transactions. And the only way you do that is by being a perfectionist in terms of double checking. So that's 25%. The next one is organization. I can't tell you how much better my life is and anybody watching this will be if you wake up every single day and you take 10 minutes. I have yellow notepads sitting all around my house. I got that from Bill Gates. Bill Gates built Microsoft at 17 by locking himself in a hotel room with six yellow notepads and he wrote out the whole basic code for DOS and things that built Microsoft, okay? He became the richest man in the world 18 years straight because he was organized enough to lock himself in a room and think through his day. And so what I try to do, and whenever I do this, I have a great day. Whenever I don't, I notice it. Be organized a little bit, 10 minutes. I actually have this little couch thing outside of my shower and I put a notepad by it. I take a shower when I wake up, I walk over to that, I kind of sit there and I just write out, I mean, it can be as little as three main projects you want to get done that day. So organization is the other 25%. So now, and then you have diligence, which is hard work, hustle and, and perseverance. But the last one is the kicker. And this is what I was talking about, the rewiring that has to happen. The last one is something called prudence. Scientists call this prudence. Prudence is the ability to make the right decision. And I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs and non-entrepreneurs, even me at times too, I'm not special, I'm, I'm lumping all of us in this. Because of our upbringing in society, our goal is, let's say our goal is like that camera right there. So let's assume that's north. So I have this compass in my brain and my goal is to go right there. Let's say it's a mile away, so north. What happens if society, my upbringing in school, wired my compass exactly backwards? So I think, let's say I can't see that camera, but I know I wanna go north, so I pull out my, my compass and it points that way. So I just take off walking and I do it in an organized fashion. I do it in a perfectionist manner. I'm perfecting my steps and my posture. I'm also working on, you know, hard work and hustle. Keep walking towards your goal. Well, the truth is, if you go south when you should go north, you could have gone one mile, but the earth is about 24,000 miles in circumference. So you get to walk 24,000 miles and you'll come up on the backside and you will get your goal. That's most entrepreneurs. The average person takes 20 years to become a millionaire. 90% of businesses fail within the first five years, 80 to 90, depending on what statistic. Most people, I did the math once, the average American has $60,000 saved by the time they're about 60 years old. So my answer, I did the math, you can do this with a simple financial calculator. Everybody in America, your parents, everybody you know will be a millionaire if they live to 160. At 160 years old, you take 60 grand at age 60 and you give it a decent return on investment, 8%, 10%, you'll be a millionaire at 160. But the problem is, the great philosopher, I think it was Aristotle or Socrates said, the problem is art is long, but life is short. The art of living and getting to your objective is long, but it doesn't have to be. It's long if your compass is backwards. So the whole point of what I was saying about adventure at the beginning is I'm trying to take myself and point it to the true north. And you have to learn that from books and mentors and life experience and listening and finding in-person mentors and all those things. They help adjust your compass. And most people are gonna get what they want just about 40 years longer. Are there like key principles though that you can use to turn that compass so north actually points north? Yes. First one is just like Alcoholics Anonymous, admit you're lost. And that one's hard for people. You tell people, even for me, sometimes I wanna think I'm smart and I got it all figured out. And sometimes I'm like, wait a sec, I'm still lost. And that, that the acquiescence, the, the admittance of the fact that you're still lost, it gets you on track a lot faster. So if you're watching this and you feel lost, it's better to just sit down and be like, I'm lost because the day you admit you're lost is the day you allow yourself to be found by people who can give you a tip. And but what's the, what's the equivalent of that? Because obviously if you're an entrepreneur, nobody's looking for you. So that's the They one are though. Who is? They are. They're, you go to Barnes and Noble, people selling their books. They're looking for you as a customer. So read. Read. I mean, 
The fact that people argue with me on this reading thing, and people argue with me about mentors. No, just use your own gut feeling. Is that how you learn English? When you were two years old, you use your gut feeling to start conjugating verbs? No, you learn from other people. You learn manners, you learn language, you learn all things valuable. You learn to drive from another person. So doesn't it make sense you learn life? So books are just the mentors who maybe are dead now. You wanna learn about Steve Jobs? He ain't alive to teach you. But you can learn through accumulated wisdom. And that's why, trust me, I meet I, very few powerful businessmen I've ever met. Um, don't read a lot. Warren Buffett, who I think is the best businessman by far in the world, because done, he has 75 companies that he pretty much runs, 200 billion in revenue. He reads eight hours a day. He reads 600. He said he slowed down in his old age. He only reads 500 pages a day. Bill Gates goes on reading vacations. Mark Zuckerberg just start, started a reading once a week book club on Facebook and already got a couple million uh, followers. And now with audio books, there's no excuse. You got YouTube videos, let this thing run in the background. And it's better if you can find it. I mean, better than books is in-person mentor. That's why I do a podcast. It, I started Google AdWords in 2001. Okay, I, was, I got lucky. I just stumbled and I was one of the first people to ever use online advertising. I was in, I think the second month Google AdWords launched. Whoa. And there was no YouTube videos. There was no Perry Marshall books. There was, there was nothing. You just kind of wasted money to learn. Now, we're the most spoiled generation. Everything, this computer on this phone, iPhone 7, is more powerful than the first rocket that put man on the moon that cost billions of dollars. Now we get that for under a thousand bucks. And people are still like, I'm lost. Yes, you're lost. Sit down and then open up Safari and go, how to do Google ads. And you're gonna come up, let's see what I come up with. AdWords, they have their own tutorial. WordStream, Jumpify, you got some paid stuff. Then you have some free stuff on HubSpot. If you sit in a chair, Charlie Munger calls it assiduity. Put your ass in a chair. <laughs> sit there and focus without being, you know the average American right now, the average person in the world, our attention span has dropped to five seconds. The sad news is the average goldfish has six seconds. We're now competing with goldfish and the goldfish are winning. <laughs> so if you don't have assiduity to sit down, read, um, there is no solution for you. You will always be poor because you'll always be beat by somebody who's willing to sit in the chair. Is there a way for people to build that discipline? Yes, pain. And that's why I'm not a big believer in delusion. You know, you asked me, one of the rewiring things we have to do in this world, I'll tell you one. You ever heard this myth? Everything happens for a reason, so just accept it. Well, there's kind of truth to that. If I jump off a building and break my legs, yes, everything happened for a reason. The reason was gravity. Like, that's why you break your legs, and physics. Legs brittle, it's concrete not brittle. So, that, but people interpret everything happens for a reason, be like, well, I was meant to learn from that thing and then B.S. Read Richard Dawkins' The Selfish Gene, one of the most important books written in the last century. He says, organisms that only learn through trial and error lose to organisms that can learn through other people's trial and error. Is anybody here, we got a little live audience, anybody here ever had to be hit by a car to <laughs> learn to look both ways? I didn't. I kind of learned from just somebody telling me, big car, two tons. Velocity, smash, dead. And I now always look both ways. So if your myth is that the only way you're gonna learn is just through massive mistakes and trials and error, you haven't read Richard Dawkins' book. If you believe in evolution, or even you don't, you believe in creationism or whatever, why do we have big brains? Because we do have the biggest brains on, on planet Earth. Not always use them, but we got the biggest potential. It's to be able to what Richard Dawkins called project. So you can literally sit in this chair and predict outcomes without having to do them. And because we're all narcissists because of society and Instagram and all this, and I'm guilty of that too, we don't like to be uncomfortable because a narcissist story to themselves is you're the best. And so you don't, you, you, your worldview is messed up. That's a wiring issue. Um, let me put it this way. I meet people who think they're smart, okay? What it really tells me is they've never been around actual smart people. If you're really smart watching this, 
let's say you have 155 IQ. That's what Bill Gates has and Albert Einstein were up there. My step-grandfather had 155 IQ. He speaks 14 language fluently. He can write Chinese. He's a chess master. He can play three other chess masters without looking at the board while they look at the board and beat all of them. If you're smart, you can do that. If you're not, I got good news for you. Warren Buffett says you only need about a 125 IQ to be very successful. But it's better to stay in your lane and just go, I'm not that smart, but you can hire 155 IQs. But that's an example of what I'm talking about of this rewiring. Right. <laughs> so these practical things will change your life. All right, since you have a concept called never be the bitch of your own mind. Yes. What do you mean by that? Your own mind is driven by deep evolutionary um, drives. So for example, narcissism is a protection mechanism, right? So your mind wants to tell you you're amazing. It makes you its bitch. You have to override that and go, you know what, I'm not that amazing. So let me go learn from amazing people. Do you have that's, methods for people to do that? Because I think that's so important. So I tell people, don't trust everything that your mind says. Certainly yes. don't buy into all of your emotions. Just because you have an emotion doesn't mean that you have to act in accordance with that. Um, but how do you help people get over that? How do they overcome that? I think humans, for the most part, learn by osmosis. So it's hard to, to lecture people into success. But what you could do is you could inspire people to understand this. So for example, if you could, if school system could find all the 14 year olds and find out what they admire in people, right? It's the reason I show Lamborghinis and Ferraris. So I got a lot of young followers. And you know what 19 year old guys like? Lamborghinis and Ferraris. So I show that part of my life because then they listen to the other stuff. So first you gotta lead by inspiration. This has been proven over. You cannot pound stuff into people's brain. People actually do the opposite. When parents tell their kids, you gotta read, mm. nobody reads. But if I show a Lamborghini and Ferrari, which is the reward that people want, and then people go, how do you get it? I said, see all these books, I read them and put it, then people, uh, I have more school kids reading books, I think, than anyone in history. I don't say that cocky. I'm telling you, it astounds me, because all I had to do was put up a video with Lamborghinis. Right. When you're the bitch of your brain, you go, I'm just gonna freewheel this day. It's very, it's very hard to be organized. We're not, not, dogs aren't organized. You ever see your dog organizing day? So if you wanna, you can either act on the animal side, which is just a wing life, or you can operate from a sense of logic and duty. And so I learned somewhat, I'm not even as good as Joel, to not be the bitch of my mind by just being around him for a while. And so that's the best way. Find somebody that you look at them and you go, this is a person of discipline, motivation, self-motivation. They don't need external motivation. They're motivated from within and spend all the time you can around them. And so for all of you who are really big on the hustle your ass off, hustle in the networking side. It will help you because you never know who you're sitting next to. So that's why I'm a big believer in going to conferences. Berkshire Hathaway Conference. It's the first week of May of every year. These dudes are gonna die soon. Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett. You can buy a B share for under 500 bucks. Buy a B share, you get a free ticket it's insane. You sit there with two men on stage in a stadium of 18,000 of the top investors in the world. Wow. It costs you under 500 bucks. You sit there, it's only one day. I fly into Omaha and fly back out almost the same day. And you walk out just motivated. You're with the guy that their business, you know, we meet businesses and they're like, oh, I'm doing a hundred million here. They did 200 billion in revenue last year. I see people making fun of the Kardashians. I'm like, you're gonna make fun of the Kardashians? Look, Kylie Jenner, the youngest Kardashian, in the last 18 months has done $400 million in revenue on lipstick kits and various makeup things with Kylie Cosmetics. Put that in perspective, L'Oreal, Maybelline, massive brands. It took them 50 years wow. as an organization with thousands of employees to do what Kylie Jenner did by herself at 20 at 18. You are gonna laugh at the Kardashians? Do you have to agree with everything the Kardashians? No, but like Abraham Lincoln said, I learn from everybody, even if sometimes it's what not to do. So you can just go into the Kardashians, reverse engineer their success, go, I like this, I like this, I like this, I don't like that. 
then leave out what you don't like. If you can pick up one gold nugget, whether it's from an in-person mentor, whether it's from a book, you become very wealthy in knowledge very quickly. One nugget a day, one nugget a day. It's like Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's business partner said, step by step you get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurts. But you have to prepare for the fast spurts by learning step by step. Like you wanna become like a supercomputer where you just download smart crap from smart people. And you pick and choose. Like some people are like, Ty, I don't agree with everything you say. I'm like, good, I don't agree with everything I say. Like a year later, I'm like, wait, I was wrong. Your life is your life. Don't let it be clubbed into dank submission. There are ways out. There is a light somewhere. It may not be much light, but it beats the darkness. Be on the watch. The gods will offer you chances. Know them. Take them. He can't beat death, but he can beat death in life, sometimes. And the more often you learn to do it, the more light there will be. You are marvelous, the gods wait to delight. Beware those who seek constant crowds, for they are nothing alone. Beware the average man, the average woman. Beware their love. Their love is average, seeks average. They will attempt to destroy anything that differs from their own. Not being able to create art, they will not understand art. Stay out of the clutches of mediocrity. Invent yourself, and then reinvent yourself. Change your tone and shape so often that they can never categorize you. Reinvigorate yourself and accept what is, but only on the terms that you have invented and reinvented. Be self-taught and reinvent your life because you must. It is your life and its history and the present belong only to you. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with sixty seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. All the others are a test of your endurance, of how much you really want to do it, and you'll do it. Despite rejection and the worst odds, and it will be better than anything else you can imagine. If you're going to try, go all the way. This could mean losing girlfriends, wives, relatives, jobs, and maybe your mind. Go all the way. It could mean not eating for three or four days, it could mean freezing on a park bench. It could mean jail. It could mean derision, mockery, isolation. Isolation is the gift. If you're going to try, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. You will be alone with the gods, and the nights will flame with fire. Do it. Do it. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew, 
to serve your turn long after they are gone. And so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will that says to them, Do it. Rage, rage, rage against the dying of the light. Do not go gentle into that good night. few moments may very well change your life, and I wish someone had told me this when I was your age. I live my life wrong, and I don't want this to happen to you. If you listen and take evasive action, I can help you change your future. Imagine having it all, only to lose it all. You are now broke. All the money is gone. What do you have? So, who are you now? Suffering comes when we obsess about ourselves, what we're getting or not getting, what we should have done, what we sh others should have done for us. It's the me, 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 me game. And so my view is, if you're watching, if you're listening to this, my goal would have you consider something. Life is short. We don't know how short it's going to be. But if you only had a week to live, I bet you wouldn't allow yourself to suffer over a little crap that makes you crazy normally. I think you would probably spend time with those you love, you would do what you love, you'd take on a sunset, you'd smell the air, you would take in everything in those so final true. moments that you possibly do. So my thing is why wait? Right, why wait? Why not just decide? that if I start to suffer, I know the solution. And right. here's what people don't get. You can end suffering by stop focusing on yourself and focus on something you want to serve greater than yourself. Your children, your wife, your mission, your life. You can get out of it in an instant because the nature of the human mind. Accept responsibility for the catastrophe of your life. And that way you transcend it simultaneously. And there's, a, there's an unbelievably hopeful message in there. And the message is, you're actually strong enough to do that, you just don't know it. And you won't find out till you do it. You can't find out till you do it. But if you did it, you'd find out that it was true. And the decisions we make control us much more than the conditions we meet. It's not the conditions, it's your decisions. Decisions of what to believe, decisions of what to do, decisions of what to give. I say to people, think about, you know, look back 10 years ago, five years ago, 15 years ago, and think of a decision you made that if you would have made a different decision, you'd have a totally different life today. Better or worse, I don't know, but totally different. The most important decision you can make above any on the face of the earth is deciding that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what happens, you're gonna live in a beautiful state. You have to say, I'm going to act as if being is good. I'm going to act as if truth is the pathway to enlightenment. I'm going to act as if I should pursue the deepest meaning possible in my life. And there's, there's reasons to do none of those. They're real reasons. So it's really a decision. But you, you can't find out what the consequence of the decision is unless you make the decision. And the other thing that's so interesting about being alive is that you're all in. No matter what you do, you're all in. This is gonna kill you. So I think you might as well play the most magnificent game you can while you're waiting, because do you have anything better to do? Really? Why not pick the best thing possible that you could do? If you wanna take the island, burn your boats. If you give yourself a way out, 
The human mind will take the way out. You'll take the path of least resistance, but the path of least resistance will never make you proud. It'll never make you grateful. It'll never make you strong. It'll never give you more to give others. That's why we have to face whatever we gotta face and just go through it, not around it, but through it. And we get to the other side. We're stronger, we're better, we're richer mentally, emotionally, spiritually, can be in business and finance as well. If you really put it out there on the line, you are a champion. You may not be the champion of the world, but you'll be the champion of your life. You can change the day if you redefine what success is to you. You can transform your damaged relationships and build new ones. You can forgive yourself and others who've hurt you. You can become a leader by mentoring with others who you aspire to be like. You can rebalance your priorities in life. You can heal your marriage and recreate a stronger love than you ever thought possible. You can become the best parent possible at any age, even 86. But don't wait until then. You'll always be able to make more money. But you cannot make more time. You are meant for greatness. You are meant for more than just what you do for a living. You are an eternal being meant to inspire and help the world. And so, you know, you think, well, there's seven billion people in the world, and who are you? You're just one little dust moat among that seven billion. And so it really doesn't matter what you do or don't do, but that's simply not the case. It's the wrong model, because you're at the center of a network. You're a node in a network. Of course, that's even more true now that we have social media. You'll, you, you'll know a thousand people, at least over the course of your life. And they'll know a thousand people each, and that puts you one person away from a million, and two persons away from a billion. And so that's how you're connected. And the things you do, they're like dropping a stone in a pond. The ripples move outward and they affect things in ways that you can't fully comprehend. And it means that the things that you do and that you don't do are far more important than you think. Because you're more powerful than you think. Way more powerful than you think. I mean, God only knows what you are in the final analysis. You're blind to your own weaknesses, but you're also blind to your own strengths. And so then I think, well, if you got your act together, it'd be better for you. And instantly it would be better for your family, assuming they wanted you to get your act together and not everyone does, but, and then it would be better for the community. It's like, how far could you take that? No one can tell you how it will work for you. Your destiny is to discover that. Your soul is screaming for you to answer your true calling. Dreams cost nothing, they're free. Uh, the hard part is just keeping them going and please keep them going because we're here for one simple reason. He believed in the dream, I believed in the dream and our dreams come true and there's no reason every one of yours can't either. Don't let what you are stop you from being what you could be. Personal ambition is worth fighting for. It, it really is something that if you don't fight for it, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. And if you regret it, you're going to be an unhappy person. If you're an unhappy person, it's going to affect your family. So you can see the chain of command all the way down, that it can be pretty devastating. Um, we, you know, the common answer is we fight for a family. Uh, yeah, but fighting for family starts with you. And no matter what anybody says, no matter how many hecklers come for you, no matter how many people try to throw dirt on you, try to stop you, try to knock you down, no matter how many people come for you at night while you sleep, you will rise and you will keep pushing forward and you will get better. Because for certain battles to be won, those battles have to take place in the first place. You might be the only one that is standing when everyone else is seated. You might be the only one that is speaking when everyone else is silent, but you might be that critical voice, that critical body that ignites what is needed for everyone else to get going. Don't hold back what it is that you have the unique ability to offer. What do you want to be remembered for? What can you do for others to make the world a better place? What is your true purpose on this earth? We are all dying. 
but only a small select few are truly living. You can step out of the shadows into the light. Today, you step into the world where true love exists and you finally realize that love, in fact, is the more you've wanted your whole life. Just love more and more, every day in every way, and never give up, regardless of how challenging your destiny in life will be. The world really needs you now more than ever, together with love, compassion, forgiveness and faith in humanity, we will defeat evil once and for all. Go forward and be the reason that people have hope in this world and never the reason that people might dread it. When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, if you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. It made an impression on me. And since then, for the past 33 years, I have looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. About a year ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. I had a scan at 7.30 in the morning and it clearly showed a tumor on my pancreas. I didn't even know what a pancreas was. The doctors told me this was almost certainly a type of cancer that is incurable and that I should expect to live no longer than three to six months. My doctor advised me to go home and get my affairs in order, which is doctor's code for prepare to die. It means to try and tell your kids everything. You thought you'd have the next 10 years to tell them in just a few months. It means to make sure everything is buttoned up so that it will be as easy as possible for your family. It means to say your goodbyes. No one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there. And yet, death is the destination we all share. No one has ever escaped it. And that is as it should be, because death is very likely the single best invention of life. It's life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. Right now, the new is you. But someday, not too long from now, you will gradually become the old and be cleared away. Sorry to be so dramatic, but it's quite true. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. secondary. We've always defined ourselves by the ability to overcome the impossible. And we count these moments as our proudest achievements and that our greatest accomplishments cannot be behind us because our destiny lies above us.
everything in my life was lining up. Spiritually, I was getting discipled. Life was in shape. On track to graduate in three years, life was in shape, education. I still remember the day I was in the film room watching film and I was watching the California Bears and my defensive backs coach, Larry Slade, came in the room. He said, Inky Johnson, I got some good news for you. And I dropped the clicker and I said, coach, what is it? He said, son, you're a projected top 30 draft pick. He said, all you have to do is play these next 10 football games. You're an automatic multimillionaire. I ran out of the room. I got on the phone. I called my mother and my grandmother. I said, listen. I said, after this season, our lives are about to change forever. And little did I know our lives were really about to change. The first game we come out, play against California Bears. I get an interception. We shut them down. We get the victory. Second game, we're playing against Air Force. It gets late in the game, found ourselves in a dogfight. Quarterback dropped back. He released the ball to the running back coming down my sideline. Now I approach the tackle like I approach any other tackle. And the way I'm approaching it, either I'm going to knock you out or you're going to knock me out. I'm 165 pounds. I can't play with anybody. But at the point of contact, when I hit this guy, something different happened that had never happened to me before in my life. I hit him, and it seemed as if every breath in my body left. My body went completely limp. I fell to the ground. I blacked out. I looked at the doctor because I couldn't feel my right arm. They had poked me with all type of needles. Inky, can you feel this? Can you feel it? I couldn't feel a thing. They took me back, they ran the CAT scans, and they rolled me back into my room, and I'll never forget it. All in about a 15-second time frame, I was lying there in my bed. My father, he went to take a step in, and he looked at me, and he said, son, I can't do it. And he walked out. My mother, she came in, she was running. She kissed me on my forehead. She said a prayer. She said, Inky, everything is going to be OK, and she ran out. And as soon as my mother stepped outside of the room, the doctor rushed in from the opposite side and he said, hey, get in here, we gotta rush this guy back to emergency surgery, he's about to die. I said, what? He said, son, what happened? You have busted up some clavian artery in your chest, you're bleeding internally. I have to rush you back and take the main vein out of your left leg and plug it into your chest in order to save your life. And when I woke up from recovery, the same doctor was standing over me. He said, Inky, I have some good news and some bad news for you. I said, you got some bad news for me? I have to tell him I was about to die. I'm still alive. How bad can it get? I'm still here. He said, the good news is, son, we saved your life. I said, thank you, sir. He said, the bad news is you have nerve damage in your right shoulder. You probably can never play the game of football again in your life. I said, doc, no disrespect, man, but I'm, I'm eight games away. I've been working for this ever since I was seven years old, Doc. There's no way. God, not now, God. Like, let me make it to the NFL so I can help my family first. I said, there's no way. I never cheated. I never cheated myself. I gave everything I had to it, and I respected it. I never cheated. There's no way that my career can be over. I said, send me up to the Mayo Clinic. And after several visits, I'll never forget, this is when reality set in. It was me, my mother, my father in the room, and the doctors came in. They said, Inky Johnson, here's the deal. He said, son, we hate to tell you, but your arm, it would never be the same again. Your hand, it would never be the same again. Son, you can never play the game of football again. He said, son, here are your surgery options. We could take a muscle out of the back of your left leg, plug it into your right arm, but there's a possibility that you'll be left with a weak left leg and a weak right arm the rest of your life. Or we could take a nerve out of your left arm, reroute it up to your chest, down into your right arm, but there's a possibility that you'll be left with two weak arms the rest of your life. I said, no disrespect to you, doc. Cut me where you got to cut me. My situation is out of your hands. I'm not choosing an option. I said, I know I will come out of this situation okay. As I stand right here on this stage before you today, they cut me six times down my left eye. They cut me two times across my right rib. They cut me two times across my right pec. They cut me one time across the left side of my neck, one time across the right side of my neck. They cut me from the bottom of my armpit all the way down to the bottom of my hand. And after they got through cutting on me, they said, son, you're going to be in this hospital for the next 40 days. I walked out of the hospital on the third day. They said, you broke a record. How did you do it? And I said, first and foremost, the thing I want you all to understand, I will never let a circumstance or a situation define my life. But I had been committed to everything that I ever started in my life, and I never stopped, and I never quit it. And so by being committed to everything that I started, I finished it. It built a certain type of spirit. It built a certain type of mentality. It built a certain type of individual. And so now I couldn't quit even if I wanted to. I couldn't lay in the bed even if I wanted to. I couldn't stop even if I wanted to. I had too much sweat equity in my life and everything that I was doing. Every day I get up, I understand. It's somebody in the free world that's looking at me to see if I'm going to keep going. And so I can't quit. 
And so I went back to school the next week after they had just saved my life. I was back in class. I had to learn how to write all over again. I had to learn how to walk all over again. I had to learn how to tie my shoe all over again. I had to learn how to bathe all over again. I had to learn how to live life all over again. Never one time did I say, let me go home. I need a break. You see, the thing we have to understand about everything that we're a part of, first and foremost, it's a blessing by God. And when it's a blessing, you can't help but to give everything you got to it. My life got saved. I got spared my life. I almost died. The doctor came to me on the field. He was on one knee and he grabbed my wrist and he said, son, you don't have a pulse. I don't even know how you're still living. And my last doctor visit, they came to me and they said, sorry, Inky Johnson, you will never be able to use this arm and hand again in your life. I said, no disrespect to you, doc, but I will use this arm and his hand every day for the rest of my life by the way that I live my life. Every day, I'm going to impact someone's life. Every day, I'm going to empower someone. Every day, I'm going to inspire someone. Every day, I'm going to encourage someone.